Hello folks, welcome to Education Matters. Here we are again talking about education in Manchester and we've had quite a week the last two weeks with the hearings for the Manchester Academic Standards. This week I have Doris Hohensey with me. We, uh, she's the chair of New Hampshire Families for Education and you can go there www. NH New Hampshire FFE. Families for Ed. Either yeah. the abbreviation or however you want to do it, you'll get there. New Hampshire Families for Education. Uh, for more information on uh, the Common Core standards or all the politics involved with it or, you know, how these standards are not age appropriate and on and on. Anyway, so Doris, we have quite It's been an interesting to talk time. About. I mean, in October 16th, the mayor decided with a full chamber of 150 people railing against Common Core that he would develop the Ma Manchester Academic Standards. That was 2013. 2013. It was October 16th. It was less than three weeks before his election. So he wanted to clear the chamber. He wanted us happy. He wanted to get on with his election. He made the promise that these would be the best standards for our students. The envy of the districts, other districts, and the envy right. of the country. And Common Core was what we didn't like. And all we got was Common so Core. So now we've gone 2,000 teacher hours later, and who knows how many tens of thousands of dollars, and all we have is Common Core. And they deny that it's Common Core, but if you listened, I was, uh, June 16th, I was in the Hollis Brookline um, Common Core Forum, and Tom Raffio was the chairman of the New Hampshire State Board of Education. He said, and I quote, he goes, I think we just had a recent example of that, as I alluded to, the city of Manchester, but if you understand what happened there, they actually took most of the Common Core. So it validated the fact that Common Core is really the true benchmark. And then Bill Duncan, he also posted on his website that the Manchester School District has now spent most of a year reviewing the concerns about the quality of Common Core standards and has come to the same conclusion that every other New Hampshire SAU has, the new Common Core standards modified to fit local priorities work well in New Hampshire classrooms. However, you have governors all over the country who are pulling out of Common Core. What do they know that our state doesn't know? So parents in Manchester are furious at least back in October in the fall, they they wanted them and out. And stakeholders who were there. And across the country, yeah. parents are upset. But apparently, the State Board of Education and our mayor know better. What does he, how does he, what does he know Well, that's they, good for our children with Common Core? They collaborated. He appointed a number of teachers that we don't know who they were because we weren't allowed to observe. No we transparency. Wanted, we wanted to observe. We would have known at least how the process worked. And if a teacher might have given some suggestions that were ignored, I mean, were these truly right. what the teachers developed? When I spoke to teachers privately, they said they keep their heads down in Manchester. They weren't excited about Common Core. And then one of our school board members, um, Robin Dumphy, came out at the last full board meeting and she made a remarkable statement. She said that it was a task of the district to, to write and collaborate to, to do the standards. And this is her quote, we have in fact our own standards. And yes, there are some Common Core standards, but that's because if Common Core has written it down directly and as accurately as precisely as possible, you can't improve on something that is already written, but that doesn't mean we have, their, or we're taking their standards. Now if that isn't circular, she's essentially admitted that we're taking Common Core. And we know that there's other standards, like the, the Massachusetts standards that Wakefield just adopted. They were internationally benchmarked. They were the top in the world. So Wakefield is on the journey of having higher and better standards. Well, they saw what Ma uh, Manchester was doing, and they didn't want to get into that. No. That's a really big problem when you've got everybody together trying to redevelop. And do they have the skill set necessary? Were they qualified? And were they benchmarked? No, nobody's been. Common Core is untested. Which is back to the, your children are guinea pigs. And that's what the smarter balance assessments are. They're not validated. They won't be validated till maybe a year from now, but we're going to take them in the interim. We're paying for the privilege of doing research for the company who's making money off of these tests. Right. And our teachers are being professionally developed to teach to the test. Right. They must be. We have Common Core in the district, 
the mayor is now getting wishy-washy. Oh, well, we're going to have to do the smart of balance because we're not going to give us a waiver. I don't. The think heck he, with the waiver. He Just said, do what is right. He says he's going to work with the Senate to, to get his waiver, to get out of the smart of balance. But who's his champion? Senator David Booten, who in 2011 tabled the Common Core legislation. Wouldn't even address it. Wouldn't even get the legislature involved. And he's going to be our champion? I talked with Mr. Booten, and he said that there is no way come next April, because the, the smarter balance is supposed to be administered in the spring. Right. Come April, March, April, somewhere around there, that there's going to be legislation, you know. Oh, it's not timely. It's not going to work between the Senate and the House and get it all together and pass legislation. And the governor's signing it. And yeah. the governor's signing it in time for the point when smarter balance is, it has to be administered. So that's our champion. That's the mayor's champion. He's running his campaign because David Booten is sitting in the seat that uh, Mayor Gatz has had when he was in the Senate. He was Senate president. So he knows the ins and outs. Yes. He said He's not being no way. befuddled here. There's no way. Um, so well, why isn't he getting behind Jane Cormier? I was going to say, now Jane Cormier, I mean, it, it's a point that when the, these, if, if even if she does get elected, there is no time to make legislation against Smarter Balance. You can stop it. I don't believe that. I think if Jane got in there and another, a lot of other good mothers that are against Common Core got in there, I'm running for state senate in Nashua, if there were a number of us that got in there, we would do something to put it Maybe in. an emergency legislation of some sort? Right. I, there's got to be a way that you can put in something to say that we're going to temporarily and then consider it further but or something. add to 193 what is it 193c or something h is is the punitive side and and there's another one that they that where you tell that everybody has to take the sm the statewide assessment which apparently the smarter balance is even though we never had a public hearing i think we can just put an or in there and just say or another test that would be comparable to your standards or to your well, content. That's the irony of this thing. Like Wakefield is going to use the Massachusetts standards, which are remarkably higher. They're having a wonder of and what they're going to do for a test. Assessments are supposed to align right. to how the students were this instructed, is and Common Core is not going to. Align they were saying them. it's incompatible. What are we going to do? Well, the MCAS is available. Well, the Smarter Balance are not validated. They're not age appropriate because we've had many people come out. So they're unlawful that way. And they're not objectively scored because so, there's so much values and mm -hmm. attitudes and different sociological questions in mm -hmm. there. So who's going to take us to court? If the district says, we're not doing smarter balance, period, end of story, who's going to take us to court? Well, why don't they prove to us that they're validated? That Let the whole thing hash scored? out in court. They won't necessary. even show us the assessments. It's another secret. Everything's a secret. Everything's proprietary. Everything's copyrighted. The, the, the people beat you and know. why are our teachers, this is the biggest concern, why are our teachers going to be evaluated based on these assessments that we can't even see? They're going to be labeled effective or ineffective, and then they can fire them if they're ineffective. Oh, and bring in those teachers, what are those teachers called? The um, America, uh, Amer uh, Teach for teach America, America teachers. This is another thing, folks. If you value your teachers, you don't want Common Core in the district. You don't want smarter balance assessment in the district. You don't want to be t uh, testing your or evaluating your teachers to be effective or ineffective. And on 20% of how the children do on the test. Well, you're straight jacketing your teachers and saying that you're going to now teach Common Core in Manchester. And then, I mean, because they might have their own innovative ways to help, help the children learn. And then they're going to be tested on something that we have no idea what's in it. And based on that, not allowing them to do what they think is appropriate and testing them on it, we're right. now going to get rid of our teachers. It's, it's crazy. Many, st many states are now in a position where they are bringing in the Teach for America teachers. Because they're cheaper. They're, they're, cheap. they're trained for five or six weeks. They're college grads. They have no education background, but they're given five or six weeks of training and they're brought in. Did you know that the National Education Association, the NEA, has just come out and asked for Arne Duncan's resignation? They're so mad about this testing and that they're throwing teachers under the bus. Well, we have NEA representing our district. Why are we not listening to that? Well, AFT is representing Nashua, and they're against the testing. And if it's all about unions and, and that type of thing, why aren't we listening? 
This like a like a freight train out of control running down the track. Because they with have no the, engineer. They have this obsession with testing, like as if they can do an MRI on our brains. And well, they somehow, will do that too. And somehow decide whether we're going to be prepared for prepared for what? Well, I see that the states who have governors more conservative are pulling out of Common Core. I think it's the governor's fault also. But in New York, there's a, a challenger to Cuomo for governor, who's a Democrat. And, against and she's, Common she's Core. against, or he? he? She. She's, she's against, against Common, Common Core. Core. So, so it's, it's not just the Republicans. It's not a partisan thing. Okay, so, New York so is there's something going on with our Common governor Common. who is not and saying one word about Common Core anywhere she goes. Well, why open up the whole thing? They take the money and then follow the directions. It's much easier than, and that's what they seem to have done in Manchester. The Common Core is also why take a political agenda for for developing something on their own. We'll just do what everybody else does, and we can't be held accountable. Well, she's going to fall. This this whole Common Core is going to fall. It's falling already like dominoes, one state after another. We have six states that have, that were in. Now they're out of Common Core. Six, heading for the seventh one. Yeah. And it, it I mean, this is just. Doomed to fail. And there's a lot of people that are considering running for president that are reversing their positions. Because they know it's not popular with parents. Right. And that happened and mothers. in Louisiana. Jin Jindal was pro-Common Core, and all of a sudden, he's completely reversed himself. You know, mothers, if, you've, if you're having problems that you didn't have before with your children, behavior problems, attitude problems, okay, you never had it before. Now, you know, it's not just, oh, the child is, you know, growing up or whatever. No, there is something going on in the schools, and it is affecting your children negatively. So beware of that. Don't unduly but punish your children. Find out the cause of why these behavior problems are happening. Ask your child. Be sensitive. Ask your child, you know, how's it going in school? You know, what are you doing in school? Do you like school? What don't you like about school? Ask a few questions. And see if they'll be honest with you and say, you know, pick up on the tips that they say. Because well, this is called Common Core Syndrome. And this is it was prevalent in New York. There's a lot of stress to this because it's, especially in the primary grades, it's not developmentally appropriate. And there have been many psychologists that have come out and warned um, teachers and warned districts that what you're asking of the children is just too abstract developmentally so their their kids are pushing and pushing and not feeling they can accomplish what they're being asked to accomplish so then they feel like i am stupid they they internalize it because it it couldn't be what these experts these teachers these authority figures so they assume that they're at fault because they've taken the test and they've got the bad scores so it must be their fault so we're preparing them to fail this is this is sad. when you're asking a child in what second grade why two plus two is four why well let's go into a philosophical dissertation of why two and two is four i mean it's they're not they're, they're not, not capable there. and they can now if the teacher gives them the answer of why two and two is four and they memorize that well they can mimic it have they have they learned why two and two is four for a test i suppose but see it's just backwards. What you do is you wait for the child to developmentally be there, and then all of this stuff just readily right. comes. It's not a chore. It's not a big task. You just gently move them from point to point, and when they are ready, it just slides in. Right. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so upset about this whole thing. Well, they're doing it this summer. This is what happened with um, Common Core in New Hampshire. It was put in 2010 in July and August. They had two hearings just like we had two hearings in Manchester. Nobody came in 2010 because it's the summer. They're on Nobody vacation. How it. many people are on vacation? We How many people are paying people attention? People that going to Manchester, but it's nothing like it would have been if it was during the school year. Right. Well, we have a meeting um, Tuesday night, which is... 22nd of July. 22nd of July. Summer vacation still. Um, and then we have another meeting on the 11th of August. The full Board of Education in Manchester will be voting on accepting the Common Core Standards, a.k.a. Manchester Academic Standards. Right. And, folks, this is the point of, of no return, okay? If, no, if well, we anything, don't go out... Anything can be reversed, but it's going to make it that much harder. If we don't go out and voice our concern between Tuesday 
and um, the 22nd of July or the 11th of August, you know, it's that much harder. Um, we need to stand up for our children in standards that are, are age appropriate and... Well, why did they waste the money? If they were just going to end up with Common Core, why did they waste the taxpayers' money? Well, and so what they're saying is money's irrelevant and we're just going to ignore all of your concerns and we're going to do as I please. It was a good way to spend money and unveil the, ma the, the Common Core standards to our teachers. It's like but a they, professional development. Okay, so what you had, you had the willingness two and a half weeks prior to election to work with parents, and then now that it's after the election, they're completely unwilling to talk to us. I mean, that's unacceptable. And we have another election coming through, so you really should pay attention. I mean, if right. Mayor Gatsis is saying that, you know, these are our Common Core champions to get rid of it, mm. he's he, not the one to listen to. Right, so now the candidates have been coming out and saying, I am not for Common Core. You've got two good candidates in Manchester, Jane Cormier, who's against Common Core, and Eileen Landis. They're both running in Manchester, and they're both moms. They both have children, and they both understand mm -hmm. what's going on. Okay, well, folks, question the candidates. Ask them what they think of Common Core. See if you get an honest answer from them. Ask them a little bit deeper and say, you know, where are you getting your facts from? Where, where do you know this from? Okay. Um, Ask all the candidates to go to the New Hampshire Families for Education website and fill out a candidate survey. There's um, 10 or 11 questions. Then they get rated. If they can pass muster, they will get a good rating. They will be A+. Plus. They will be your, your champions. If they don't, then you know to steer and clear. When will that be? When will the results be printed on? The results are ongoing. So as soon okay. as as soon as you fill out a survey, they can look up the candidates. They can look, look up the. Okay. It's posted. Those who have filled out a survey, the results are. Oh, up. okay. If Great. you're running for state rep, I am. You need to fill one out too. Okay, I will, and appreciate that, Doris. There's the effort. over a hundred candidates that have already. Makes done it that. easier for us to figure out which candidates are for Common Core, which candidates are opposed to Common Core. Makes a difference, folks. You can see the questions, you can see the results. You can also see, which is very interesting, is there were five Common Core bills last session. So House members, how did they vote? Because there's some who will come in there and say, oh, I promise you the moon, just like Mayor Gatz mm -hmm. But if you look at their voting record, it's like an F. Right. So they've got to follow through. Mayor Gatz has promised us the world, but his voting record is, is not stellar right now. No. Well, we need to keep track of that. And also that local control is the issue. It's not necessarily good standards or lesser standards. It's the local control. We, are, we have lost local control in our district to make decisions for what's best for local our students. Local control means the parents come in and interact with the, the school The parents do, not the Chamber of Commerce. And we respond to those parents favorably. But right now the Chamber of Commerce is the stakeholders, those members in the Chamber of Commerce. And they are exploiting our children for their gain is how I see it because they want a workforce and they want the taxpayers to pay for it. Well they shouldn't have a bigger voice than parents. No they should not. They don't so own the children. We, our, our parents that they, their children come home they have behavior problems they have you know issues that are just not working out well that they're crying at the table doing their homework night after night the parents throw up their hands I have no idea how to help you this is common core and and the parents have no say. We were left out of the process. We no transparency. Observed. No observance. There's no m minutes or notes, so we have no idea the what pu happened. The public hearing. T tell me what happened at the public hearing. You, not that I don't know, but the folks at the home. The public hearing is supposed to be a little different than public comment period. Public comment period is three minutes, and they tell you you have 30 seconds left, which is helpful and distracting all at the same time. And you're limited because there's a big crowd. Well, these hearings, we had one in West High School last week, and we had one previous to that in, in another high school in Manchester, and uh, they lasted 10 to 15 minutes. And people were yelled at for going over their three minutes. 30 seconds left, you're now over. Those meetings start to finish, took 10 minutes and 15 minutes. Wasn't that but supposed they, to be asking questions of the teachers who were involved? But they got no answers. It was just, thank you for sharing, the meeting's over. And Natalie came in with questions about the math. She's had questions not answered by the district about math and, and how they're going to be well, I kind of doing the math. I'm concerned that this is how the teachers went into those 
developmental lessons or sessions. They came in and they said, they got their three minutes and they said, we think that the standards should be like this. Thank you for sharing and they're gone. Right. And we ended up with Common Core. So how much input did those teachers have? Because the parents obviously are having none. Well, there's one man in control and that is David Ryan. Well, he I, is the manager of all of this. He is the architect of Manchester Academic Standards. But he operates under the superintendent who operates under the mayor and the board. Is the mayor? The buck stops with the mayor. Exactly. He's the chair of the school, school board. He's chair. And he didn't let parents in there to observe. If he had let parents in there to observe, we would have known what process was used. And was it a fair process? And were teachers listened to? And were teachers ignored? And were there interesting mm -hmm. ideas put forth? Mm -hmm. Or was it just how best to implement Common Core in Manchester? Exactly. That's what I was saying. The professional development for... Uh, because they were very carefully selected teachers. Well, which teachers were selected? We don't even know that. It was just a black box, in and out, and we got what we started with. Well, if the buck stops with the mayor, then I don't know how he's going to turn this around. He's, you know, it, other districts are watching. He was supposed to set the example for the state, and Wakefield watched, and Wakefield understood. Said, no, forget this. We're just going right. to pick the, the school board, pick the standards. Unfortunately. Well, that was he, good. He missed the mark. He, he missed oh, the, the opportunity. Oh, the mayor missed the mark. Yes, the mayor missed the, the opportunity. Wakefield took an opportunity. And, and they're taking the reins now. Right. So they will be they will be the ones that lead the way. And Sandra Stotsky was up there talking to them for a couple hours and uh, helping them so that they can deal with those higher standards from Massachusetts. And start implementing. And how to implement mm -hmm. them. Yeah. yeah, they said it's still going to take a little while to implement and, you know, to bring it all together and and make the put it all in in place but but those school board members were were very good they said that we asked questions from both sides and we never got answers from the proponents of common core we had unresolved answers they could never answer our questions and they said that they knew there was something wrong at that point so then they decided to get people who were against the standards up there and try to listen to both sides and they made a decision and mm -hmm. they weren't afraid to make that decision they they took it right so, uh, um, well, I, I would like to just mention one, a, a reference that folks can go to. You know, you're just probably all confused here. What's going on? It's political. Yes, it's political. Uh, there is a video on YouTube named Story Killers. Now, Story Killers is how the Common Core destroys minds and souls of children. Okay. Do we live in America? Do we want our children to be have, have an American education with American principles, American ideas and ideals? Or do we want them to be globalists? Well, first of all, they have American passports. There's no such thing as a global passport, a global citizen passport. This is all farce that they're saying, oh, well, we must be prepared, preparing the children for the global 21st century, being global citizens, and that's bunk. Well, it, it undermines the state constitution and the, the constitution. I mean, because we we are sovereign, we're citizens of the a state sovereign of nation, yes. and they're just exempting them from that and exempting them from both all all of our laws. I mean, you have to operate within a system, and it, it's radical. This is an this, extreme agenda. It is, and it it takes away the joy of being a child, like Tom Sawyer, or Huckleberry Finn. Yeah, that's, Those that's are the gone. stories that have mm -hmm. embedded in them. American ideals and values. Yeah, that's and why they're taking them out, folks. So now you'll have to go to the bookstore and get those privately because your children will not be reading those in school. But see, that's what gave them the joy. You know, they read the stories, they go out and they look at their lives and they see what they can do. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if you're if you just, you know, getting rid of that and it's this tedium that you're giving them in replacement. Informational texts, graphs it, and it, charts. It's not the same. And, replacing all that they need to understand that it's joyful to learn and they have to understand that they can do it and and children when they read a story they like to idolize right what look up to they, things yeah there's no heroes who are the heroes today in common core look up heroes in common core and see who they are they're all the left the leftist radicals i mean well i don't know i think there's the left and the right is objecting to common core it, it's a particular group that put this in and um, they weren't authorized by our state. 
our state legislature, if it was state-led, our state legislature would have voted, say, we want to be part of this project. Nobody in our legislature even knew there was a project. So our state was not right. participating. So basically it was a hijack. It was just somebody mm -hmm. with money pretended or invited a few select people, oh, we participated. That That's not the same no. as authorized and involved officially, right. and we were never involved in this process. Well, Story Killers, How the Common Core Destroys Minds and Souls, and that's by Terrence O. Moore, M-O-O-R-E, and that is through, uh, he's a professor of history at Hillsdale College, and, you know, it, it's a couple hours, and it's very worth listening to. If you don't know anything about Common Core, um, go to YouTube and, and type in Story Killers, How the Common Core Destroys Minds and Souls. I mean, there's so much we can get into, Doris, but, but I it's think... both right and the left. There are Democrats and Republicans against Common Core. I mean, the Republicans, the RNC, came out unanimously against Common Core last April. And there are Democrats, as I said, the candidate in New York State running for governor, and she's got support. We'll see who wins the primary. Right. And she may not have the money that, that Governor Cuomo has, but I know there's a lot of uh, teachers and parents that are behind her. She's got the principal. Yeah, she's because principal. Because you, you've got all those teachers that are being thrown under the bus. The unions are trying to protect them. They want the Secretary of State to resign, uh, secret the U.S. Secretary mm. of Education to resign, because he's not protecting right. our American institution right. of public education. They're just dismantling it. Right. Well, we have to wrap up here. Um, we have a meeting tomorrow night, which is the 22nd of July at 6 o'clock. It's the Curriculum Instruction Committee meeting. If everyone can come who's got concerns with Common Core, just, just be present. You don't have to talk to public comment. Just be present and show your support against Common Core. And, um, and also the 11th of August is the full board, the final vote for implementing Common Core in this, in this city, uh, in Manchester. So, well, Doris, I think it's another day. But well, we'll see. I think parents, when they get back, they will be very upset when they learn that nothing happened and their taxpayer money was wasted. All right, Doris. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for And we'll, me. we'll pick up this uh, after these meetings and see what has transpired, and we'll see you next time. Okay. Thank you, folks, for coming. See you next time. <laughs>